Hey everyone, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to be using optics from Boris FX. We're going to apply a number of different filters to change this photo from a very kind of ordinary looking filter to something that really pops and sizzles. We're going to be working with light effects, color effects and all kinds of things. Let's get started. So the base application I'm working with is Adobe Photoshop and we're going to be using Optics as a plugin. So the first thing we want to do is convert this to a smart object so we can work non-destructively. So right click on the background, choose convert to smart object. And now we're just going to go up, choose filter. And then under the filter, you'll see virus effects, Optics. Optics is going to launch and this gives us a preview of pretty much what we're going to create. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this and we're going to work from the beginning. So let's just hit the reset button here and this will reset everything to the default image. So what we want to do is we want to start by applying some kind of effect. I want to do a gobo effect. So we're going to make sure that we choose the light and then under light, we're going to go down and choose the light here. And this gives us a gobo effect, a gobo meaning you know, we've got something that the light is shining through and it's creating shadow and light. And this kind of looks like some Venetian blinds. Uh, there's all kinds of different types that we can choose from here. Lots and lots of different ones. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with this one. I kind of like it, but I want to make it a little bit larger so it covers the whole subject. So let's go into the parameters. And this is where we can adjust any of the filters. So the first thing I want to do is I want to increase the size of this. So we want to grab the scale. So if you look under transform, we can drag that up to increase the scale. And you know what? That's going to look good. Now notice that the light's kind of going through here and it's really harsh. Maybe you want that look and maybe you don't. We can change the way that works is just by changing things like the brightness. We can adjust that where we're not blowing out our model. And I think that looks a lot better. We can also change the blend mode to something like maybe a screen, subtract, and the subtract will give you the opposite effects. If you want to invert the gobo, that's how you would do it. I kind of like what we've got here is the add. Now, if any of you have ever really observed the, the real world, you'll notice that if a shadow falls on an object that's coming forward, the background is not going to be the same. In fact, that shadow would probably be a little bit larger or at least displaced on the background, if not softer. So what we're going to do is separate this by creating a mask. So we're going to choose the mask. This is going to add a mask and it's going to ask us what type of mask. And I want to use an easy mask. When this is selected, essentially we use the tool here to paint the area, the foreground, or this is the area we're going to keep. And this will use the background. And then what's going to happen is Optics is going to use that mask with that information. It's going to detect the color and the tones and make a mask. Now you can use this to go along the edges if there's any areas that needed, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, adjustment. But why don't we just start with painting the foreground. So I'm just going to go over this and let's just go around the area we know we want to keep. And the nice thing is because of the nature of what we're doing here, we don't have to spend a lot of time to get this absolutely perfect. So this is going to work quite nicely. Now let's tell it what we want the background to be. And then we're just going to paint with a red around the area of the background. And don't forget the little gap in here. Let's go in there and select that. And I'm just going to add a little bit in there. Excellent. Now we're ready to generate a mask. So go all the way to the end and choose generate mask. And just give it a second here and notice what's happened. Let me just click on my layer now and the mask will disappear and notice what we've got now is it's just falling onto our subject and not our background anymore. That's exactly what we want. Now what I want to do is I want to create the same kind of an effect. I want to duplicate this but make it different on the background. So what we're going to do is just click here to add a new layer which adds a new filter. Now if we want to copy the settings that we have, which is this light effect, we just simply click and drag up and that will replace it with the new one. It's that simple. So you can see how it's going. Now it's doubled up on the foreground here because we have both of these layers working together. So I'm going to use the mask. 
So we just drag that mask up. And now we've also duplicated the layer mask. Now I want to invert this mask. So we're just going to select the mask here and you'll see an invert option. Now, when I turn that on, notice now that everything looks like it did before without the mask. And essentially we have the same thing because we have this effect on the foreground where we've hidden the background. Then we inverted the mask to show the background and hide the foreground with the same setting. So you can see it looks just like it did before. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to expand it on the background. So let me just select here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in BG just so we know we're working on the background that renames that layer. And then we're going to go under our parameters. And under the parameters here, we can change the scale. Notice now it just affects the background. So let's make it a little bit larger. And also, why don't we blur it a little bit so we can go under the blur. And let's just increase the blur. Not quite that much, but just give it a softer kind of a blur. And you can see now we've got a little bit more displacement between the foreground and the background. And now we're getting more of a kind of a realistic gobo effect. I kind of like what we've got with the gobo. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do something with color and then we're going to top it off with some nice light effects. So let's do something with the color. We're going to create a new layer and we've got a lot of different tools we can use here in optics. We could go under the color settings and you can see there's a lot of different things we can use here. We can also use the film lab. I kind of like the film lab because we've got some nice looks and also some film stocks. Why don't we start for film stock? Let's choose this. And by default, we're getting this nice Agfa Optima. And this creates an interesting look. So why don't we do a, go for a kind of a cooler background, but a warmer foreground? I think that'll be kind of fun. So how do we do that? Well, we only want to do the background, right? Well, why don't we reuse the mask that we used before? Remember, we re renamed this as background. So let's just drag that mask. And now it's going to apply that mask. So now it's only affecting the background. I like that. If the effect's a little strong, we can adjust the opacity on that layer. Let's just bring it back just a little bit. So it's not quite so strong. Nice. So let's do the same for the foreground. Now we're going to create a new layer for the foreground. And this time, why don't we go under the looks? And we can see we've got some different types of looks that we could apply here. You know, if you want to get this kind of soft, glamorous kind of a look, this looks kind of nice. And, uh, you know, th these are kind of got some interesting looks here. We've got bright shade. We've got all kinds of different looks we can apply. Let's go under color. And one of the things I like to use here in the color is if we choose the color correct, you'll notice that we actually get some looks here directly from different movies. I'm going to go down here and why don't we look at something like maybe from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's kind of nice. Or Dances with Wolves. That's interesting. Why don't we apply a mask? So this time we only want to show the foreground, not the background. So let's go down, grab the mask here, drag that up. And you can see now we have a different look on the foreground as we have on the background. Now, I'm not sure now that I'm looking at this that I feel like this is the right uh, look. So why don't we select this once again? We're going to be just double click here to make sure we're working on the top layer. I want something of a little more punch, a little more saturated. Maybe we could grab this Harry Potter. But let's just go under the parameters here and I want to make it just a little brighter. So let's up the brightness. So as you can see, all of these can be adjusted. So even when we apply a preset, all the parameters are available so we can adjust it into anything we want. I'm kind of liking what we've got here. Why don't we have a look at our before and after? And a quick way to just kind of look at everything is just to go under the original layer and just choose the little icon here of the screen. And what it does is generally speaking, whatever layer you're selected is what's going to preview. But we can override it by choosing this little TV screen. And let's turn that off. And I like what's going on there. Let's add some lighting effects. So let's create a new layer on top. And now what I want to do is I want to apply something that I really like is the lens flares in here. They're really neat. So let's go under the light effects. And I believe that, you know, to me, the light and the lens here are kind of what sets optics apart from other plugins. So let's choose a lens flare. 
And as you can see already, we've got so much more interesting than lens flares than what we get in Photoshop. So let's just um, click in some of these different ones. I want an anamorphic, which is kind of, you know, what you see here. It's a JJ Abrams kind of style. So let's go into the parameters and let's make this larger. So let's make the scale width bigger. So what I'm doing, as you can see here, I'm making these nice and large. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to apply it all the way in the foreground because I want it to kind of be coming from the background. So why don't we grab this background mask? We're going to drag it to the top and notice what's happening now is it's showing just on that background. This is looking good. I can turn off this filter just for now. The little lightning does that and we can see. Ah, OK. That's looking good. It's almost where we want to go, but I'd like to kind of see it creep in a little bit around the edges. So let's double click to select our mask. Why don't we go and blur this mask a little bit? Notice as I blur that mask, it allows our filter to just kind of bleed in around the edges and kind of wrap around a little bit. And I like that. That's a lot more realistic to what a lens flare would be doing in real life. Great. Let's create one more layer. And I just want to top this off with the ice halos. This is just a really kind of a cool look. So I'm going to click and you can see what we get. And these are like these kind of ice halos that you would get. And it's just kind of a way that the lens refracts with light. So let's just go through, try some different ones. I kind of like this one and I want to scale it. So choose the parameters and under the parameters, let's change the scale. Let's make it larger. There we go. That's more like what we're looking for. And let's reposition it because we don't want this on the face of our model. That's not a good look. We always try to leave those faces um, intact because that's an important part. So don't have, you know, flares and things going across the eyes if you can avoid it. All right. So let's have a quick look at the before and the after. Let's go down. Here's our before and there's our after. I definitely like what we've got going on there. <laughs> Big difference. So now I'm going to apply this. So just hit the little gear here and it's going to bring it back into Photoshop. And here we have the result. I think it looks a lot better. And because we created it on a smart object, we can at any time double click to go back into optics, make those changes. We can hide it. We can mask it in and out different areas. And that gives us that flexibility. So I'm going to give you a code underneath where you can save 25% off the uh, Boris FX optics if you like. And also you could just download the free trial if you want to kick the tires on it. So I'm curious, drop your comments underneath. Um, what did you guys like about this? What was your favorite filter? And what other kind of um, tutorials would you like me to see? Maybe covering some other areas here inside of optics. Let me know in the comments. And if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And of course, if you guys like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.